Design complex rigging systems with ease by utilizing these new truss improvements. In Vectorworks 2020, it's now possible for you to freely rotate all rigging objects, including trusses, lighting pipes, and lighting ladders in 3D. To further increase efficiency, the Auto Connect feature is now a multi-threaded process, increasing the rate at which you can insert truss and perform braceworks calculations. Another benefit of the truss objects being freely rotated is that you no longer need to maintain multiple libraries for the same type of truss in various orientations. We've simplified all of the Vectorworks truss libraries by removing the libraries for vertical and angled truss. These improvements will significantly decrease the amount of time you will need to spend searching for and editing different truss symbols. In addition to features for modeling truss, we've also introduced new features for keeping truss organized in your drawing. With updated object classing features, you can now automatically create and assign classes based off of specific information from each truss item. This will make it easy to keep track of both where and how different pieces of truss are being used in your design. With this latest release of our rigging design and analysis module, Braceworks now supports calculations for attaching more than one hoist to a speaker array. We have also introduced enhancements for all of our other smart objects by improving how they are represented in Braceworks. There are a number of new settings and user interactions that we will need to cover. Let's begin by exploring the improvements for inserting truss into our Vectorworks drawings. Before we start, let's set up our drawing so that the truss items are automatically assigned to a specific class as they are created. To do this, we will need to go to the Spotlight menu, then Rigging, and select Braceworks Preferences. Once the Braceworks Preferences window appears, we will need to navigate to the Object Classing tab. With the Object Classing tab selected, we need to check the box for Automatically Assign the Class for All Truss Items. We could use the Use Existing Document class to assign all of our truss items to the same class. However, we want the truss items to automatically be assigned to a class based off the name of the truss symbol we are using. So instead, select Use Value of Field, then select Name from the drop-down menu to the right. For the class name, choose Prefix. And we are going to use the text Truss Name for the class prefix. By adding a prefix, it will be easier to keep our classes consolidated in the class list of our document. Once everything is set, select OK and exit the Braceworks Preferences. With our object classing set up, we will open up the Resource Manager to find the truss symbol that we're going to insert. Within the Resource Manager, we are going to expand Vectorworks Libraries and expand the Objects-ENT Truss folder. Now expand the Euro Truss folder. If you take a look at the list of files, you will see two main options, straight and corners. Because truss can now be freely rotated, there's no longer a need for files containing vertical or angled truss symbols. From the list of files, we're going to select the fd44-straight file. Next, open the straight folder. With the folder open, double-click the very last symbol for fd44-400. This will automatically activate the Insert Truss tool. And if we look near the top of the screen, you will notice that we have a number of new tool modes for inserting truss. To start, we're going to use the Insert Single Truss and Insert Horizontal tool modes. With the correct tool modes active, insert a piece of truss into the file by drawing a line on the design layer. If we go back to the tool modes, we can set the truss to automatically insert at an angle by choosing Insert Truss Tilted from the second set of tool modes. We also need to set the hanging angle to 30 degrees. When we go to insert another piece of truss, it will now be placed in the drawing with a 30 degree hanging angle. We can see this in a front view as well. Now let's say we need to insert multiple pieces of connected truss at 30 degrees. If we set the first set of tool modes to insert multiple truss, we can do just that. This time we will need to draw a much longer line of truss and multiple pieces of connected truss will be inserted with a 30 degree hanging angle. If you select a piece of truss and look at it in the object info palette, 
you will notice that it now includes editable fields for roll, hanging angle, and rotation, to give you even more control. You will also see that the truss has been automatically assigned to a specific class based on the truss name. Another area where we've made major improvements is in rigging workflows for audio equipment. Here we are going to start off with a speaker array already inserted in our drawing. Now let's go into a top plan view and get a clear look at the bumper. With the speaker array selected, we can go to the bottom of the object info palette and choose to show rigging guides, as well as set the hanging support to multiple hoists. With the rigging guides enabled, we can now activate the hoist tool and begin placing our hoists. We are going to place two front hoists and one center hoist near the rigging guides. As we are placing the hoists, you will see the red line appear from the Auto Connect feature, similar to what we see when attaching hoists to truss. With the hoists attached, let's take a look in 3D to see how everything is lining up. The hoists have automatically adjusted to the height of the bumper, and everything looks correct. Lastly, if we run a Braceworks calculation of the suspended speaker array, we will see that all of the relevant forces have been calculated and the system is properly supported. At this point, we're ready to move on to the next speaker array in our project with the confidence that we've incorporated safety into our design.